and we are live. Hello everyone. Again, another episode of the Puppet Podcast. Hey, I'm so happy because yeah, you saw my background change. I'm out of Montreal right now. I'm kind of my little hometown in Gaspésie called Matan. And uh, yeah, I want to just share this wonderful space, kind of in nature, uh, near the water. Really, really nice time. Just kind of a, a pause, but not a pause because we still have a many, many podcasts, many activity. So everyone watching right in the chat where you are, it's always exciting because tonight we go to Venezuela, Texas. We will be in some Latin America um culture with a great puppeteer but just before we go into the interview hi Aileen happy birthday yeah, thank you that was my birthday yesterday I celebrate here and uh, near the water it was really cool with the family uh with the mask and whatever we handle it really properly so yeah I want to share um the workshop that we we do it's coming on August 7 and it's really, really interesting. Look at this. It's with Swazzle, a company from Los Angeles. Those guys was doing puppets for Jim Carrey performance. And they will do this workshop about palettes, small palettes for quality puppets. So have a look for the Patreon. It's really a, a wonderful workshop for really cheap. So I want you as a member of this community that we build with the puppet podcast and yeah be free to just be turned on on the 7 august 7 it will be in the at 7 east time but for pacific or central a little bit earlier for you in the day Bo, okay let's start with this wonderful interview and please welcome in the screen, someone I really admire, me and Eli, we are super fan because we saw this guy promoting his job online, just doing, keep doing it with the rules. And it was so interesting to discover him. Please welcome Mr. Leo. <laughs> Hello. Welcome. <laughs> Hi, it's a pleasure for me to be here. Caroline, thank you so much. I'm so excited when you wrote me. I say, oh my goodness, this really, I like your podcast and I like your all your interviews. It's interesting. People and puppeteers are around the world. I am a pleasure for me to be here tonight. Yeah, I'm so happy that you accept to be part of the show and that you will share your knowledge about puppetry because you have an amazing path and you are really a warrior of puppetry right now. I really <laughs> consider that like warrior doing it just you mm, it's so cool so could you maybe i love when the person introduce himself to the the crew hey who is there <laughs> okay hello everyone my name is mr leo but th this is my artistic name my real name is leonardo velasquez i'm from venezuela latin america and i love my country and speak spanish perfect it's my native language mm -hmm. and i came to houston five years ago when one idea in my mind, I make a puppet show maybe 20 years ago. And when I moved to Houston, I say, okay, I will do it. I know I don't know how many times it takes for me to make a puppet show in Houston, but the puppet came first like me. They came in a big box and the stage. And I, I think right now I am a very, very lucky person because I'm making a puppet show around the Houston area. And during this uh, pandemic, I'm active right now, making a lot of puppet show. Yes, it's so interesting. And, and people, if you haven't saw his work, just look Instagram. It's popping all the time. He's in front of a, a driveway doing a puppet show with those little yellow, uh, orange, <laughs> <laughs> little yes. distance. And it's yes, so, so cool. Amazing. But yeah. do you know, it's, it's really difficult because when the people, I am also Spanish teacher too. And I have a, right now, but before the pandemic, uh, six school. And I use my puppet for the Spanish class. And the kids love it because I use puppet, dance, marionette, music, instrument. And every kids and parents call me, Mr. Leo, can you come to my house and make a puppet show on the driveway? And when the kids 
look at me so like a Mr. Leo. <laughs> remember social distancing, please remember. <laughs> but it's so funny. Do you know the kids is spontaneous? It's like a wow. But for me, it's a pleasure because they love my job right now. And I make it uh, someday I wake up like, okay, pandemic time. Everybody go to your house. Okay, what I do? I have a truck. I have a big speaker and I have a big puppet. The, the, his name is Tommy. Um, and I have marionette, dancing marionette. Okay, I'm going to the front of the house and make a different puppet show, interactive puppet show. It's fun. The kid dance, play. It's, a, it's a, For me, it's like, a wow, I am a lucky man because I am a puppeteer. And can I do my job right now in this pandemic? Yeah, I have my... Um assistant who tell me yeah to remove your glasses because it's so pretty to see your eyes but maybe you will see the comment but i will do the moderator for you it was like yeah, you, you want, we want to see your beautiful eyes Thank i you. want to to go to the interview because i always ask the same question and mm -hmm. it's so much good thing and you are kind of on the field so i like to have the viewpoint of someone like doing it so hardcore style so it's amazing the first question is why do you cherish the art of puppetry i cherish the art of puppetry because i remember when i was 10 years old yeah. i started to make a theater workshop and when i was maybe 14 or 15 years old I went to the puppet workshop in the school of uh, school of puppet in my in my city Maracaibo, Venezuela, and I say, "Wow, I I saw a lot of puppet show when I was a kid, and for me it's like a magic. It's like a wow. Fifteen years old, my first puppet workshop, and I think, wow, this is magic. <laughs> I think this is magic." Yeah. I, I want to live in magic all my life. Mm -hmm. I have to do a lot of puppet show. When I was 15, when I was 18 or 20, I have an idea. Uh, maybe can I do a puppet for business in my country? It's a big country. It's the second country of the, the big in Venezuela. And I say, we have a lot of people here. And uh, the people love the puppet. And I say, okay, this is my way. And <laughs> I am 45 right now. 25 years ago, I never stopped. Okay, yeah. I say, I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm, I'm here right now. <laughs> you are a doer. That's amazing. Yes. Uh, yes. And I want to know maybe your crush. You talk about this time at 15. Could you say to us how did your crush for puppetry happen? Um, happened when in the first puppet workshop. Yeah. When I, when I saw the, do you know the traditional guignol puppet? This is maybe the first one I make, maybe 15 years ago. Oh. When I saw this, and when I saw the puppet version, and my teachers make a puppet uh, for, for, for me and my friends and the student, and they say, okay, this is a puppet, but they have a own life. It's like a wow, it's magic. I say one more time, it's magic. It's a crush. When you go maybe with the museum or whatever you want, you saw a picture and you say, wow, what happened? What do you feel when you saw this picture on a sculptor or whatever you want? That happened for me when I saw the puppet. Right now, when I when I go to see the puppet show in, in the live puppet show or, or, or video or YouTube, it's like a I feel like a wow. Do you remember the the, the movie Billy Elliot? Uh, yeah, yeah. I think I I saw the preview. When somebody asks Billy, "What do you feel when you dance?" and he say he's like mute, and after he turn around and say, "I feel like uh, I'm flying right now. It's like a magic." Yeah, I feel when I saw the puppets, when I put the puppets on my hand, it's like a, this is the first crush. And I say, I think about this. OK, I want to do this all my life because uh. I feel this this is a strange crush for me. Yeah. <laughs> wow, yeah. And I make it doing a theater for kids. And when I say, OK, 
Uh, I have an idea. Maybe can I do the puppet for my business, for my life? Yeah. And do it in my country, Venezuela. And when I start, I never stop. Never, never stop. That's so cool. We have a question here by Eli, who is the fan, number one, of Mr. Leo. He asked about how do you prospect, uh, like, how do you prospect to get gigs in driveway? Like how you find it? But it, you said at the beginning it's people from school. But... Yes, they're from the school because the parents call me. Mr. Leo, the kids miss you. <laughs> okay, I have an idea in my mind right now. I went to the friend's house and I make a video with my truck and the big puppet. They have two kids, little kids. And I make a video and I post the video in my Instagram and everybody starts to ask me. Hey, what is this? What is because the name is Puppet Parade. I think uh -huh. I have to. I I need a name for this show because it's uh -huh. different. Okay, yeah. when I say it's puppet, it's a uh, it's a puppet parade. It's a good like a. And when yeah. I say this is a puppet parade, social distance, that doesn't mean do you have to make a a good time for kids. Yeah. And, I never stopped, maybe three or four months ago, and everybody wrote me in Instagram and Facebook, hey, can you send me information about the puppet parade? What is a puppet parade? It's a puppet show. Uh, can you do it on the parking lot or okay. patio house or driveway? And I never stop. I make uh, one yesterday in a patio house, and everybody's like, wow, it's a, it's a safe show because it's a, with social distance. And OK. Go. I never stop, right? Life is moving and moving, moving, moving. And I make a, a virtual puppet show too by Zoom. Uh -huh. And it's good. But the first one for me is like, a, I can hear the kids. I can like, a, oh my goodness, what are I doing? <laughs> it's a strange the first time. But the second and the third is like, a, okay. But I prefer um, with audience in the puppet yeah. parade. Yeah. That's it. For sure, and it's good to call it a parade because it's like not a, a an assembly. Like people don't get together. It's it's passing. It's a good yes. name to name the thing. Uh, I want to go to my next question about um, the the field of study. In your opinion, what would be the best field of study for a puppeteer? For me, uh, is experience with another puppeteers. Mm -hmm. Right now, I'm making a puppet workshop. The Buraco, Buraco Technique. Yeah. yeah. She's amazing. I give you the contact because she's amazing. She's from Venezuela too, but she lives in Mexico right now. Okay. Um, she makes a, a project like Naku Teatro, Naku Theater. Uh -huh. And she makes a beautiful, beautiful show with Buraco Technique. Wow. And, okay. Uh, she makes a, a puppet show for adults. For me, it's a difficult. It's like a wow. And I saw a post, a post on the Facebook. I say, wow, this is Sonia Gonzalez from NACU. I want to. And I make it right now on a Buraku workshop every Saturday. And mm -hmm. I think the best way too is, is with friends, puppeteers, workshop, um, university too. But we have a little options for a study puppet and universities around the world. Yeah. And for me, it's, it's sharing the experience with friends and puppeteers around the world. That's great. That's true. The experience is so key in what we do. And what would be like your own definition of a puppet? Like when the kids ask you, do you have like something funny you bring to them? For me, puppet is magic. It's, it's whatever you want. I have a lot of marionettes, but they are some like a strange animal. Uh -huh. And I say I make a game with the with the kids because I have a big box. Okay, I have a special friend right now. He's an animal, and when I put the head out the box, say what kind of animal is this? And the kids say, uh, I don't know. I, and I say, that's it. Whatever you want, the puppet. Whatever you want is magic. The napkin can be a puppet. The cup can be a puppet. If you take a glasses and say like this. Hello, I am Mr. Glass. How are you today? Good. Yeah, yeah. This is a puppet. Uh-huh. Because can you be can you transform everything in a puppet? Everything. Yeah. It's a I game. Like it. And it's a magic because yeah. for me, magic is like a game, and you can use magic and game and whatever you want. 
Wow, so much key words like magic and game. I think, it, and it's a lot of enthusiastic emotion linking yeah. with those words, like a lot of high energy thing. So it's really uplifting. Yes, yes, yes. And I feel the magic when the audience, when the kids say, "Mr. Leo, I love your puppet show." For me, is wow. Do you know the kids? For me, is a really hard audience. Because they are spontaneous all the time. When they don't like it, say, I don't like it. I, okay, then I'm go. But when I say, I like it, she stay engaged all the time. It's like a, and the adults stay. When the adults stay, quiet. And don't see the <laughs> their form. For me, it's like a, yeah. Good job, good job because engage the, the big people is like a, wow, it's hard. But when they ha when that happens, it's like a magic. It's like a wow. And they say, okay, I want the puppet. Okay, the last week I have a puppet show for a birthday girl is uh -huh. uh, 42 years old. <laughs> Why not? Say, Mr. Leo, I want two in my party. But my husband say, no, not right now, not right now. And she make a party for the kids around her house. And oh. but she love it. I say I love the puppet. I love your your magic, your enthusiastic, and uh, she dance her friends. It was uh, okay. The birthday girl is <laughs> two years old. <laughs> <laughs> that's so perfect that's a great example and yeah people among approve like puppet have magic power so you have a lot of approval on the chat too <laughs> i wanted to know in your opinion like do you think the art of puppetry is in an ascension right now yes yes yeah for me yes right now in houston that's happened when i made when i made a puppet show uh -huh. The people say, wow, a long time ago, I don't see the puppet show, but yeah. I like it. Because that happened when they say, when the people, the adults remember, when they uh -huh. are kids, like, a, wow, I remember the puppet show <laughs> when I was a kid. Yeah. And when you saw the puppet one more time, it's like, wow. I make it before the pandemic, uh, I made a lot of festival because it's like a, it's like a tradition for me. Never die the puppet. Mm -hmm. Is and and right now it's like a, for me. It's uh, it's a good first. My Spanish class is a it's a really good tool for me. The puppet is. I have a Mr. Pedro and Miss Luisa. They are my assistant. They are okay. a puppet. And when I, I start the class, the, the kids, Mr. Leo, where is Mr. Pedro? <laughs> oh, she's here. <laughs> Hello, my name is Mr. Pedro. And she she and he only speak Spanish because uh -huh. they are the assistant for a Spanish class. And for me, the, the puppet is in ascension right now. It's like um because yeah. everybody loves that magic. Yes. And somebody the people don't remember, but when you see the puppet, it's like a wow. Suddenly it's like, oh, I remember the puppet show when I was a kid, and everybody go and connect with the puppet show. Yeah, it's a kind of a, a magic recall. And then, boom, uh, yeah, that's true. I love that. And I want to know uh, if you feel that puppetry has reached its full potential, or do you think we, we will get the golden age at some point? Um, yes and no, because we need a more feel for puppets. But uh -huh. I feel right now we, uh, every puppet is, puppeteers uh, around the world can make the difference right now, uh -huh. you know, because we need more space and uh, TV shows or whatever, but we can do it. Uh -huh. I can do it by myself because right now I have, I have a new project, it's Mr. Leo Kit, it's for, for a Spanish class, and it's a, kid, it's a little kid with Mr. Leo, and they have puppet. Of course, uh -huh. finger puppet, and this is my. Um, you can do it by yourself. When you do it by yourself, you know you feel the energy around the world. Is we can do it. We need more space, but for me, it's easy because yeah. it's like a magic, and everybody loves magic. When 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 you have a puppet and when you have magic, you go to the different place, and everybody remembers the puppet show. Yeah, that's it. 
Yeah, oh. Elise, like like the movie from the 80 and the 90 get a lot of puppetry in it. So to make this recall, if we are all together, we can bring this to the world for sure. Yes, I, I think. Agree. That's good. And where do you see puppetry maybe in 10 years? Oh, I think we are around the world in every place, in every place. Schools, malls, festivals, shops, wherever. Whatever, yeah. whatever, yes, I think, I think. That's good, I love your positivity. Yes, yes, because I believe in puppets all the time. I think for me, yesterday, I'm, I'm looking for a sponsor for my new project. Uh -huh. And when you tell everybody, okay, I have this project. Okay, the kids have fruit, fake fruit, puppet, and uh, Mr. Leo's uh, book, activity books for the kids to practice Spanish. Uh -huh. And everybody say, I like the project. I want to support the project. And I have right now, from yesterday to today, six sponsors. For me, it's wow. <laughs> it's like, a, it's like yeah. a Spanish project, but with puppets. Oh, amazing. I, making, I, I, will, I will make a video. I'm using the puppet. It's interactive video. When the kids have a kid, when the kids have a kid, they can, they can see the, the video. I say, hello, my name is Mr. Leo. Do you have some puppets in your kit? Okay, go, do it. I have too many puppets with the kids. Okay, the cow make moo. It's a, it's a game with, with kids. Uh -huh. In Spanish. Wow, that's so cool. We want to help you. <laughs> the kind of project we really believe in it. It's kind okay, of... we can do a project around the world with different puppeteers. In that's... Spanish, in Spanish, English, French, whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. We will make multi-language. I want to know, like, because it's kind of good to ask the the future. Like, what is your biggest purpose as a puppeteer? Like, right now is learn Spanish with yeah. puppets. Yeah, to make no. this. Because make a Spanish teacher for me is was a surprise because I am a teacher. Mm -hmm. I have a degree from teacher and I have a degree for educational psychologist. And I say, when I came to this country, this beautiful country, they gave me the opportunity to make my job with puppets. For me, it's, wow, it's amazing. And I say, somebody called me for a t-shirt, a Spanish t-shirt interview. And I say, what? Oh, yes, I go. Okay. Uh, are you ready to make a demo class? Uh, no, maybe tomorrow. And I go to my house and I put two puppets in my backpack. And I go to the school and I say, okay, what I say? Okay, I have some music in Spanish. I have Mr. Pedro, Mr. Luisa. Okay, we go to sing in Spanish. And the, <laughs> the manager of the school say, okay, it's okay. Don't worry. Can you stop? I say, you don't like it. And I say, I love it. I love it. You are hired. Go. <laughs> go. We need you sign the contract right now. And... The big purpose for me right now is, is to learn Spanish, teach Spanish with puppets. Yeah, to do this project and make it grow. That's uh -huh. so cool. Yes. Yeah, I want to, to, to help you on this. It's, it's so cool. I, I, I practiced my Spanish, so maybe I will learn <laughs> more. <laughs> That's cool. I want, for the conclusion, we, we always bring puppets, but I want to ask you, because before the interview, you talk about Augusto Boal. So you studied mm -hmm. in Brazil. Do you think yes. this kind of like, for the one who know, like Augusto Boal is kind of a, a wonderful... Um, how I don't know the word in English, but because but he brings something really something new and really deep to theater deep. culture, and and I want to maybe just know a bit about how he influenced maybe your way of going into the field and bringing your art because it's part of his culture. Yes, it was a very important for me when I studied with Augusto Boal. Because do you know the technique, the Teatro del Oprimido? It's like a, he wants to come back to theater from the people. Do mm -hmm. you know? I feel right now the especially the theater and the theaters is like a, uh, it's only for only kind of people. It's like intellectual people go to theater, and he can to make a transform with the people. When I when I was in Brazil, we make a lot. We made a lot of 
puppet workshop with people around the city. You know, Rio de Janeiro is a big city. Mm -hmm. And it's an amazing city because do you can you see the difference with rich people and poor people? It's like, wow. And when I went to the favela, it's in the mountain, it's a dangerous place. Mm -hmm. And when I saw the chain of the people, recognize your body. Like it's an instrument to communication. Is I have a I have a beautiful experience because I when I made the the workshop, some ladies say, "Okay, do you know what happened? I don't know what to read. I don't read. I need help." Okay, I make a translation in Portuguese, and two two weeks ago, two weeks later, he say, "My son, he helped me." With the screenplay and i say wow and when i saw the the theater is like uh the play is like a wow do you know the body her is like this anybody can see me i don't want to anybody see me it's like this yeah, and one most of all is like wow i'm here look at me i am seized is Teatro del Oprimido is amazing because he transformed the people in, in he go back to the theater to the people. It's, it's amazing. The transformation when you make a Teatro del Oprimido workshop is wow. It's amazing. Yeah. And he transformed my life because I, I make a puppet show in all places. Uh -huh. Driveway, <laughs> school, mall, the street, parking lot, because everybody needs the the puppet. I think all the time everybody needs the art for yeah. for life. It's like sensitivity. It's like a, and if you lose the art, it's, you live in a different world. It's like a, and and I give it this opportunity for kids and and families. That's such a great conclusion. It's like <laughs> you wrap up for people, art for people. <laughs> That's so yeah. amazing and a lot of like humble work and. Philanthropic. <laughs> I want yes. for the conclusion. Maybe you bring a puppet. You have so much behind you. So maybe you have a, a favorite one. Yes, because I have a new friend. Oh yeah. Oh, his name. His name is Giancarlo. I made a survey in my Instagram because he is new. I buy this in, in Facebook Marketplace. When I saw the picture, say, "Wow, it's a professional puppet," and I say, "Okay, how much?" Twenty-five dollar. I want to. <laughs> Can you send me the address? And I go fast and take the puppet. And I post in the Instagram a video with with the puppet, but he don't. He doesn't have a name and say he is seen um, in Nessun Dorma by La Boheme with Pavarotti. Okay, I need a name for my friend. Nessun Dorma. And everybody write Italian's name. Um, the winner is Giancarlo. <laughs> And he is. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My <laughs> name is Giancarlo. <laughs> and I said, Nessun Dorma. <laughs> Nessun Dorma. <laughs> <laughs> he is Giancarlo. I have to fix her hair. <laughs> yeah. And do you know if This is a uh, too many seconds. I feel the magic. It's like, a, it's, you know, the skin is like a oh. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. It's kind of a, a a good way to find puppets. We we never know what we find in marketplace. <laughs> you never know. When I saw, say, okay, this is a professional puppet, and when I see the tag, it's a, it's a people from Texas, but they don't they don't make a puppet right now. And somebody told me. They are two uh, uh, brothers, and they are really, really good puppeteers. Look at this. It's really, yeah. really amazing. Look so at the we, arm. So we don't know who built it? No, not right now. Okay, maybe we will find. <laughs> yes, yes, me too. <laughs> that's, that's good, like to post it on Instagram. Who built this puppet? And, and we put it on the network of the Puppet Podcast, and we will find. Who built okay. this wonderful <laughs> <laughs> character? That's amazing. Thank you so much, Mr. Leo. So if people want to see more of your your work, where they can find it? 
And then Instagram is Mr. Leo Puppet Show. And then my web page is Mr. Leo, uh, Mr. Leo Puppet Show and Entertainment. Yes. And Facebook, Mr. Leo Puppet Show. So let's Google Mr. Leo and you will find. <laughs> <laughs> you put Mr. Leo on uh, Google and do you find me? Yes. <laughs> for sure. That, that's so cool. So does your, your puppet have something to say for the, the end of our interview? Yeah. And yes. a special message. Yeah. Dear Caroline, thank yeah. you so much. <laughs> you are amazing and I love your puppet podcast. Muchas gracias. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mr. Leo. You're and welcome, you're... Caroline. Yeah. I love your job. For me, this is amazing because we are connecting around the world with different puppeteers. It's amazing. Yes, that's the purpose of it. And at some point, I think we will just get together. <laughs> yes, we need it. We need it because we need more strong. When we are together, the strong is higher, 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 higher. higher. We need it. Yes, thank you so much. I'll stay there. I will just remove you to do my conclusion, but we will talk after the interview. Yes. Thank you. Have a good night. Take care. Yeah, yeah. Everyone, that was amazing. So stay tuned. We have plenty of episodes coming next week. And uh, yeah, this workshop, I bring it again in the screen. Those swazzle guy, maybe it's the those guy who built the puppet of Mr. Leo. Those are twins' brother, maybe. Oh, let's see. We will find <laughs> this. But this will be amazing about pa palettes of puppet. So have a look on the Patreon. See, we have plenty of tips to help puppeteers to make their job job more known with social media with with LinkedIn, with Instagram, with YouTube. So we, we kind of building something. So we want to make people growing at the same time than us with the Puppet Podcast. Everyone have a wonderful evening. Stay safe. And yes, keep create because that's key. Keep create, stay in touch with each other. And yes, we will get through this and we will make Puppet Golden Age happen. <laughs> Hey everyone, have a good evening and see you.